So here I am to tell you stories from the life of Jagjit Singh. I know that some of you will know a lot. Some of you may know a little. Some of you may know something right. Some of you may not know anything at all. So I am going to pretend that all of you know nothing at all. And I know everything. OK. So here we go. I am going to start with Jagjit's father, whose name was Amar Singh. He was born a Hindu, but he converted to being a Namdari Sikh. And they believe the Namdari Sikhs are strict vegetarians. They believe in kindness to animals, much before all the cows came into our history. And uh, they believe in uh, abstinence from all toxic materials like liquor and tea. So he grew up in a household where even tea was not allowed. And he says when he was a child, he went to a school where they sat on the floor and used slates with pencils, you know, chalk pencils to write on them. And they didn't have a radio. When the World War II was on, he and his father would walk far away into a ground where they could hear the news coming out of a radio in somebody's house. So that's how he grew up and he did the, co he was one of many children, so he did the usual chores that people, children do in such families. But he had an ear for music. And when he went to the Gurdwara and he started learning the Gurbani, his father realized that this boy has something in his voice that's different. Now, he was named Jagmohan. And it was a, a Sant who came visiting who said, change this boy's name, make it Jagjit. He's going to win over the world. Of course, nobody knew whether he would be an administrator, a writer. Uh, what would he be? Uh, a physician? How would he change the world? Would he be a scientist? Nobody thought of music. But he continued to enjoy music. And when they became a little more prosperous, his father got a better job, but uh, went up in life, they bought a radio. And he started listening to the radio, and he started listening to music and singing along with it. That's when the father said, let's teach this boy music. And he sent him to one teacher, who was a blind teacher, Chaganlal. And when that teacher said, I have taught you everything that I could teach you, he was sent to a very, very important teacher called Jamal Khan. Very impressive man who claimed the descent from Tansen himself. And Jamal Khan taught Jagjit a lot of serious bandishes, a lot of Drupad, a lot of singing. He trained him in music as deeply as he could. So here was the classical training, and here was what he heard on radio. And this boy was greedy for music, so he would listen to records in other people's houses. He would you know, they would attach little torn tickets of the cinema hall because they didn't have money to go and weren't allowed to go watch films. But he would go and see films like Nagin because they had a lot of music. And somewhere he found that he enjoyed listening to Muhammad Rafi and he enjoyed listening to Talat Mehmood. So there the seed of his love for the ghazal was sown. And somewhere he said, there is this man called Madan Mohan who is making amazing music with using the ghazal form. And I love his song. So it was all there. When he was in class 9 is when Jagjit's first talent showed up. He was, all the students were asked to do some uh, religious music. Uh, and he decided he was not going to sing anything anybody else had sung. That's all Pasi. He said, I am going to do something new. So he took a poem from the magazine that came home and he set it to Rag Bhairavi and he offered it to his audience, much like I am offering you the story. And he said, this will decide whether I continue here or not. And to his surprise, now I am not expecting you to do this, to his surprise, the audience was throwing coins, right? And he realized that he was on the right track. So to cut a long, long story short, because it is a, it is a career that went from school to college to intercollegiate, and he found himself in the intercollegiate competitions, singing 
classical music and light music. And who did he find there? He found some very interesting people as his uh, co-competitors from other colleges. One was a portly gentleman who became very famous as Kitane Admi The Amjad Khan. He was there in the dramatic section. And the other person was a d man who wanted to be a hero. But we know him as a director, Subhash Khai. Subhash Ghai and Jagjit became very friendly. Subhash Ghai says, I also used to sing. And we would sit together around the college bonfire and sing songs, sometimes very rowdy songs in Punjabi. But yes, we sang. And then he tells a very beautiful story about what happened at an intercollegiate competition in Bangalore. Now, you know Bangalore, you know the South, Kadak classic, classicists. They know their music, they know their Bharatnatyam, they know their Kuchupudi, North, all rubbish. Okay, that's the attitude. So they had so many students singing classical Karnatic music and maybe a few Hindustani and the audience was spellbound listening. By the time it was Jagjit's chance, it was 11.30 at night. And then they announced, now this is Subhash guy talking. He said, I'm standing in the wings and Jagjit's name is announced. Jagjit Singh from Punjab. And there is a little twitter in the audience because they are expecting Bhangra. Okay. Then Jagjit comes in with his turban and his beard. He was a Sikh. And he takes up, puts his harmonium there and he starts and the audience starts laughing because he says, classical. So they say, ha, 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 how can you say classical? So he puts, he starts the alap and the audience starts whistling. You know how rowdy college boys can be. They whistle, they stamp their feet. They're generally making an ass of themselves. And what does Jagjit do? Subhash is saying, ab to flop ho gaya. Ab to khatam ho gayi baat. But Jagjit closes his eyes and starts singing. He sings and the audience after five minutes is quiet. After another two, three minutes, some clapping, surprised kind of clapping. I don't know how you can be surprised clapping, but Subhash says there was surprised clapping. And after 10 minutes, they were clapping every time. Every time he did something with his voice, they were clapping. And at the end of it, you know what happened. He won the prize. So that was how Jagjit started proving himself. And he also started singing he was also supposed to be studying in the middle of all this, but he also started singing at people's homes. He was getting invited. And once when he was in Simla for such a competition, a gentleman who was an actor from, in, from Bombay heard him and said, why don't you come and sing at my house? And Jagjit went and he sang and somebody gave him a hundred rupee note. So it was earning, he was very thrilled. And then to add to that, this gentleman, this actor, very kindly man whom we all know by the name of Om Prakash, said, why don't you come to Bombay and try your luck? You will find a place in playback. Your voice is brilliant. You have such a command over the medium. And so Jagjit came to Bombay and was introduced to Jai Kishan. Jai Kishan did a voice test and said, yes, I think we'll find a place for you. Nothing happened. Money ran out. Jagjit ran away. How did he run away? He boarded a train and hid in the loo because he had no money for a ticket. He went back. His father said, okay, but sit abhi, padai karo. I want you to be a civil servant. Ganawana side business. So he tried to study. He copied. He cheated. He says he did all that. And then my friend said, look, buddy, you're never going to be a civil servant. The pass hi karoge tum. We are buying you a ticket. We are giving you paisa. And they pushed him on a train and brought him back to Bombay. Where did he stay? He stayed in Elphinstone Road in a little building. After one week, he couldn't pay the rent. They threw him out. So he moved in Agripada, which is the back of beyond as far as decent places in Bombay are concerned. And he stayed in a room where there were seven beds and he had a bed to call his own. And there's a very sweet story of how one day a rat bit him. And when somebody said, what happened? He said, kya hai yaar? I can't feed myself, but I can feed somebody else. 
So that was his attitude because he decided that he had to make it. Uh, I, and what happened was that finally a friend of his offered him an EP, which is an extended play record. People my age and closer to my age will know what that means. It's four songs on a small uh, record. And then one thing led to another. It sold 5,000 copies. He was very thrilled. He got an LP and they made history later. But we are going to now stop there with the fact that when his first EP came out, they said publicity karna hai. Even those days they did publicity, okay? They didn't have Twitter, they didn't have hashtags, they didn't have Facebook, but they still did some publicity. Maybe one flyer went out, one press note went out. So they said, photo chahiye. And Jagjit said, if I go put my picture with my turban and my beard, people may laugh at me again. They may not take me seriously. So he went to the barber and said, please make me look like everybody else. Look like a singer. His father was very upset, but that launched the look that we know Jagjit by. He became a non-Sikh looking Sikh because he continued to follow a lot of the tenets of his religion, which, uh, which his father had adopted, but he continued. Chitra met, saw Jagjit the first time when uh, she was a married woman. She had a little baby, baby daughter and uh, she lived uh, near the Parsi General Hospital with her husband, who was an executive with a company, very well off, happy. And there was a Gujarati elderly uh, lady and her husband who had adopted a baby. And the babies were friends. They would play together with their two ayahs in Chitra's house. And this lady was very fond of music and she would call various singers to come and sing at her place. And Chitra would, of course, not go there because her baby would not be quiet. So she would um, listen to the music coming from that house to this house through the balcony. She could hear some strains on and off. So one day she heard some music and she says when the music stopped, she went to the balcony and she saw a man there smoking. And she says he was wearing white pants which were so tight that my thought was, how does he walk in those pants? You know, it was the fashion then to wear very tight pants. So he was wearing those pants. And then he, she forgot about him. The next day, the lady came, the neighbor came, and she said, um, you want to come and listen to music? Yesterday, we had a very good singer. So please come and listen. So Chitra said, OK, baby is sleeping. I'll come. So she went and she sat down. And this lady played. She had recorded the music. She played the music. And a ghazal was being sung. And Chitra said, I don't like this voice. Who is it? He said, oh, this is a new young man called Jagjit Singh. And he's very popular. You don't like it. He said, is he a sardar? He said, I don't know whether he's a sardar or what. I like his voice. She said, no, 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 no. Ghazals have to be sung like Talat Mahmood sings them. Forget it. I'm not interested. And she got up and went away. Now look at destiny. It plays very strange games. There was no reason for her to meet him again. But Chitra had a husband who was a gizmo freak. They existed even then. He had, he had imported equipment and created a recording studio in one of his rooms. And a lot of famous people, you know, Louis Banks, Sham Benegal, they would all go there and record their ad jingles or even their entire ads and at that, uh, using that equipment. And then a gentleman came who said, I am going to give all these aspiring young singers a chance by cutting a disc where I will take it like a teaser to various companies and be an agent for them. And there was Sulakshana Pandit, there was Bhupinder, there were a lot of other people. And she said, uh, he told uh, Chitra, you also sing because I've heard you sing and you're not bad. So let's give it a chance. So Chitra says that by 2.30, everybody started coming in. And uh, they were getting ready for the rehearsal. And she was the hostess. So she was making, making sure they had chai and whatnot. And then she said the doorbell rang. So she goes and opens the door. 
and she says to her surprise she sees this man standing with his hand on the on the doorway fast asleep so she says come in come in and he kind of looks around comes in goes to one corner of the room lies down and falls asleep so the recording start and finally it is his turn only he is left and she is left so they wake him up the person who was recording maninder singh he says are a jao lallu a jao so lallu is woken up shaken and woken up obviously he hasn't slept with the rats around and he comes he sits down and he rubs his eyes and then he takes his harmonium and he starts singing when he starts singing chitra says oh ho oh, this is mr white pants she recognizes him then more trouble the gentleman mr singh says why don't you both sing a song together you are the only two left why don't you sing a duet or baat khatam karenge to so chitra looks at him and says his voice is somewhere there down deep bass and mine is thin high up in heaven how do you think we'll sing together i am not interested i don't even like his voice and he looks around the house and says why do you need to sing you are well off you know so sparks fly she gets up and goes away he sings his song she sings her song and then kahani khatam but no destiny has other ideas husband comes home says kya recording hua sunao and what does he do he falls in love with jagjit's voice expected okay everybody is not chitra singh <laughs> at that time it took her longer so he says i want the man i want this man i want to use him so he calls jagjit and for four days he sits with him recording for his various ads and what not and then again jagjit vanishes from their life it takes two years for chitra and jagjit to meet again they meet at a jingle studio both of them are doing jingles chitra is doing jingles in 20 languages by now she is known as the jingle queen people get 25 to 30 rupees she is getting 200 bucks because she is so good she is able to copy the enunciations of different languages so well that she is doing that and she finds that she is face to face with this mr tight white pants outside a studio so she says let's be polite she chats with him and she says where do you stay he says oh you know agri pada so she says theek hai main raste mein hu i'll you sit in my car i'll drop you i'll get off and the car will drop you she says after all he is a co artist it is only courtesy so jagjit sits in the car and when they reach home she says chai piyoge of course juwe daud rahe uske stomach mein he says haan ji piyunga so he goes up utne mein husband aate hain he says are he bahut din ke baad mile very good come on please come have dinner with us so he has dinner he says please keep coming and every sunday jagjit and bhupender and many other singers have a little adda they meet and very often when they go the rest go away at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock this man stays back to have dinner at the husband's request no hanky panky is happening huh? please don't get your minds working hanky panky happens from another side the husband one day drops a bombshell and tells chitra i want a divorce so chitra is asked to stay and spend her days in a little house which he has got for her which is a 1 bhk and it's what she talks about that 1 bhk and how she lived there with her daughter is painful okay because during the divorce they have sleep in separate homes so anyway that happens and what else happens from that time of the divorce is that all chitra's friends who are friends of the couple now suddenly decide that they are on the side of the husband they think they have to choose so chitra says when i am walking people would see me whom i have known who have been guests in my house who have had dinner with me whom i've cooked for will cross the road and walk away looking down and through this bad period she had her daughter with her and she had one solitary friend jagjit he would make sure that she was not alone that if she needed anything he would go to the bazaar and get it if her lamp had to be changed he would get on to a stool and change the bulb he did these little he would babysit the daughter if she had to go for recording 
he was a friend and in the process he started training her voice what he did was he taught her how to enunciate and how to modulate her voice so it matched his so that thin squeaky voice went and a um, richer voice came in you know so this is what happened they started doing shows and finally there's a very sweet story chitra says i don't care if it takes an extra minute i must share it with you she says one day she was cooking and jagjit came in his nose was streaming his eyes were red he obviously had a fever coming and he sat there hu hu so she says like any woman would do i took a can of hot water boiled it and put it in front of him and said chalo sir cover karo or you know take the vicks ka inhalation so he was doing that and she says i was cooking and suddenly one thick voice says marry me so she says i am not yet divorced but marry me she said but i am still married i'll wait so that was all that was the proposal and that proposal after 2 years in 1970 led to a wedding actually bupinder and 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 the person who used to play the tabla whose name i have instantly forgotten uh said let's do something let's go to the temple and let's have a ceremony there's a priest there so somebody brought two garlands bupinder bought a little packet of sweet so 30 rupees mein shaadi ho gayi 30 rupees and then they went home broke as ever khadka you know and then in the middle of all this because his records had done well hmv got up and said let us do an lp and that's what happened the unforgettables happened so what happened when he they recorded this lp when he was approached he said ha ha lp karenge okay and he went and told chitra main lp karunga chitra said mera kya hoga so he suddenly realized he'd left forgotten about his wife you know so he said ha she says he was great at grunting i think all wives will say that about their husbands he was great at grunting he grunted and he walked off and then he came and told her we will do an lp and that is how the lp happened and chitra says that he trained my voice but he always always she felt and he also told her once or twice that he compromised by letting her sing with him and why why because he was classically trained she says i was a parrot he teaches me i will sing exactly what he teaches me i cannot do one extra ah because i don't know how to do it but he can take something three lines and sing for 45 minutes and he was somebody who never liked to be tied down his nature was like that his music was like that but he tied himself down so that he could sing with her and her voice to people were surprised how beautiful it sounded in unforgettable it was unforgettable they recorded this they went off on uh, went off to london for a holiday with some money they had got with 700 rupees in the bank when they came back they had 80000 because the record had become such a big hit and they never looked back after that they went they were invited to you name it albert hall you name it they were everywhere singing you know in every country why do you think the ghazal was his chosen form there's a beautiful story about his meeting with madan mohan madan mohan's son but we won't we won't i'll let you read that story but i will tell you why he chose the ghazal the ghazal has been around from the 6th century a lot of people fight with me when i tell them that the ghazal was not sung it was a poem it was a poem with a very fixed meter with a very strong and very severe structure and the rhyming couplets had to go in a particular pattern it was like the english sonnet you couldn't fool around with it and nobody fooled around with it it went it started in arabic it came to persian and then it came to urdu but the structure remained the same and somewhere along the way uh, people were re uh, rec reciting it 
Nobody sang it. Then it entered Indian classical music. We don't know when it entered, how it entered, who the scholars were, there is no written record. But classical tunes were applied to it. It then became an esoteric form that those who understood what the words were enjoyed and the music was enjoyed. In the 12th century, what had happened is that the Sufis got into the act and started writing ghazals which were double meaning. When you say, my beloved, you think it is some pretty damsel. No, it is God. So that is what they did. So by the time it came into classical music, the Konoza would know that this was something divine, while the normal person would say, aha, this is a beautiful love poem. But it still remained in the, in the stratosphere. Then the film walas came into it, and you had people like uh, G.M. Durani, these are all histor historic names today, unfortunately, Noor Jahan, singing Muhammad Rafi, and of course, the eternal lover boy, Talat Mahmood, singing ghazals, which Madan Mohan and others like him set to music. And then, because the language was simpler, the tunes were simpler, it kind of went into the public domain. But it still remained part of something. There was Kavali, there was Ghazal, there were all sorts of genres which people listened to. And it was Ayagaya. Jagjit, when he took up singing for Unforgettables, decided to use the Ghazal and decided that he had enjoyed listening to the guitar in the college function. So let's bring in the guitar. Let's make it contemporary. Let's make it different. And he started adding. Now, if you look at the songs in Unforgettables, this one had the guitar. The next one has the sarangi, which is the traditional complaining notes of the ghazal. So he mixed all these. So the, he used the saxophone, he used the guitar, he used um, you know, African instruments, which later on R.D. Burman would make famous in his mixture of Indian and cl uh, Indian classical and Western uh, pop music. So he used all these instruments together and made it very, very popular. So that is something that suddenly appealed to everybody. And he, his choice, again, of, of, of lyrics was very different. When he used to sing Rafi, when you think of Rafi, what do you think? You think, yeah, oh, no. He sang, oh, dunia ke rakhwale. And that is what people loved. Because his whole mental approach was towards meaning. And the guzzle for him and the tunes that he made, made sure that the words got their worth. They were not lost. When they were in the UK, Chitra was cooking for them. And uh, there was a whole unit over there. They had hired a little house outside London, and they spent three or four weeks there. And he took all his traditional instruments too, which is why I played this song. But he took all his modern instrumentalists too with him. And uh, Abhina is somewhere here who used to play the tabla for him. He will bear witness to the fact that never, ever did Jagjit not give full attention to his instrumentalists. He always made sure they were comfortable first before he looked after himself. He insisted they were treated on par. Am I right? Yes. So it's amazing that, and, and, and it's an honor to have someone who's played with Jagjit here. Uh, anyway, I'm sure there may be others in the audience. I'm sorry. I am not aware of them. Uh, anyway, they, what the British were completely amazed about was not his music, but the fact that this was a one-man package. Because he wrote some of the lyrics, he composed the tune, he played all instruments, any instrument you give him he could play. He arranged the music and he made sure everything went well. And he looked after his instrumentalist. He was a human being outside of being a musician too. So beyond time, if you talk to Daman Sood, he will tell you story about a story about how this happened and how wonderful it was this experiment worked. And this was a hit, hit, hit one, hit success uh, album. You know, destiny plays very funny tricks. 
Mr. Jagjit Singh had come to Bombay to become a playback singer, right? So what did he do when he was staying in Agripada? He would take the train every evening and go to church gate. All of you know Gay Gaylords? He used to hang around outside Gaylords, along with a few others, Subhash Ghai, Bupinder, Kuldeep Singh, and many others. And why were they hanging around outside Gaylords? Because inside, there would be people like Jai Dev, Jai Kishan, having chicken patties and drinking cold coffee. And they would hope that they would get noticed or get an offer. And then he says that Kuldeep and I used to joke, ki, you know, Kuldeep wanted to be a music director. And Jagjit, of course, wanted to sing. And Subhash Gai wanted to be an actor. So they would all joke, ki, tumhe actor kyu banna hai? Tumhe gana kyu gana hai? Playback kya karoge tu? So this jokes used to happen. And then Kuldeep used to say, Mujhe agar kabhi bhi mauka mile music direction ka, tum gaoge mere liye. And he used to say, Haan, agar mehje gaane ka mauka mila, you will make the music. But that didn't happen. Till suddenly, when he had become famous and did, have, did not have any reason to want to be a playback singer, playback came to him. Sometimes universe conspires a little late, you know. So there was this movie called Saat Saat that was being made by Raman Kumar. And he said, I want very simple music. So he got this new director, uh, Kuldeep, to do the music. And he said, you know, I have heard Jagjit. Will you be able to get him? I can't afford him. So Kuldeep said, no, 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 our old friend is old. And we have that old thing we have, no? I will take it and take So he says, I went to Jagjit and I said, will you sing? And he says, Jagjit didn't even ask me if you will give money. He just came and sang. And in fact, when the unit didn't have sometimes money to have their lunches, he would quietly make sure that the lunch was served. He would finance it. He would sponsor it. Secret sponsor. Not like today, teen billboard either, teen billboard either, not like that. So, anyway, now there was another movie being made, you know, when it chappad phaad ke deta hai Bhagwan. So there was another movie being made by Mahesh Bhatt. And he said, Jagjit, you will make the music and you will sing. And there was a problem here for Kuldeep. He said, Jagjit is making music, Jagjit is singing. Here I am making music and Jagjit is singing. Both movies are being made and will be released together. Everybody will think Jagjit has made the music and I am taking the name. So I kaise isko badlu? So in Saat Saat, he made Jagjit sing a note higher than his normal note. And he says, Ki when I started recording, Jagjit stopped after the first line and looked at me. And he says, I got scared. I saw nothing. Then Jagjit nodded. He understood that there is something going on he said, and he sang. So the songs of Saat Saat became a huge hit. And Arth became another big hit because Kaifi Sahab wrote the lyrics. And Shabana says, you know, between Jagjit's voice and my father's lyrics, I didn't have to act. I just had to let it go. I had to just... Take the words and let the expressions would just follow. HMV being a very smart marketing machine made a cassette, double cassette with Saat Saat and Arth together. Till today, it is their highest selling cassette. So that's it. Evidence by itself. Jagjit also worked a lot with Gulzar. Gulzar met Jagjit when he was still struggling. Somebody took him to him and said, ye Bhupinder hai, ye Gulzar hai. And Gulzar says, haan, main unko janta hu. Ye mere bade, chote bhai ke friends hai, mere bhai jaise hai. Bale, to fir inka liye kuch karo na. So Gulzar said, kya karo? Bale, film mein kuch kar do na. He said, aap to jante ho. Film mein to, main khud accident, accidentally a gaya. He said, iska bhi accident kara do. He says, I didn't know at that point what to do and how to make accident because Rafi, Mukesh, Hemant, the whole Kishore Kumar, the whole Pantheon was sitting there. Where do I gusau this, these two bachas? So he said, I couldn't do anything. But when he was making Mirza Ghalib, 
he said here is the voice that will do mirza ghalib and here is the man who has the sensibility and the sensitivity to do mirza ghalib so he called jagjit and jagjit said yes yes of course absolutely karenge ye to ho hi jayega hai hona hi hai then what happened fireworks why strong men strong ideas successful in each in his own way very passionate about what they are doing and what did gulzar say he said dekho bhaiya i am a purist i don't want your twang twang and all there i am setting this exactly in the milieu that galib lived in and i don't want anything any instrument that was not used at that time i've done my research and i will tell you what instruments to use jagji said forget it ye nanga panga main nahi karunga he called it nanga music he said isme kuch hai hi nahi dressing hi nahi hai how can i do it so he went home and sulked and sulked and gulzar sahab baithe the aayenge sahab malum hai aayenge galib is so powerful so jagjit sits and thinks and see how how a genius mind works he says okay what am i against i am against gulam mohammad who made suraiya singh and talat singh for the film i am against begum akhtar who has sung galib who has not sung mirza galib so how am i going to make myself stand out so he says let me think and he thinks and he comes to the conclusion that galib was not a singer he didn't walk around the street singing his songs he recited them so he said i will do what gulzar sahab wants i will keep the music so pure the instrumentation so low that galib's words will show up and that's what he did and the songs one after the other as the serial rolled became very very popular gulzar sahab after this was over said when when it was very popular and people said wa wow, sahab aapne kya kar diya he said three people made it happen the serial nasir jagjit and galib he didn't take any credit because he said without them the serial would not have happened simultaneously you know when jagjit got things he got it except his wife he got everything in pairs uh, sardar ali sardar jafri was also making a serial on urdu poets and he did kehkasha where he composed and sang for eight different poets and it ran for a very long time unfortunately it was not as successful as mirza galib because gulzar sahab has gulzar sahab in him you know so it worked more but those are also beautiful i would request i mean i would suggest if you have the time and the energy it's all on youtube do watch it it's beautiful it's really beautiful now uh, if the song had gone on a little more you would have seen neena gupta in it now neena gupta plays a very important role as the courtesan and therefore chitra sang she sang fewer songs but she sang and chitra shares this beautiful story where she says ek din uh, serial chal raha tha and the phone rang she says maine uthaya and there was a gruff voice on the other end saying oh jagjit hai so she said nahi wo bahar gaye hain acha theek hai she said nahi nahi if you have a message i'll take it she says ha theek hai usko bol do poocho usko ki serial to acha khasa chal raha tha ye female voice khama kha kyun ghusaya usme <laughs> so she had she laughs at herself and she says you know people didn't like my music didn't like my singing with him they preferred only to hear him but he was kind enough to make sure that i walked the path with him what walked the path and they set the trend for everybody you i mean you name it afterwards all the gazal duos who came all the singing husband and wife duos who came followed So now we are going into another chapter. One person also she believes didn't like her voice was Lata Mangeshkar, but Jagjit had another idea about Lata Mangeshkar. He nurtured a dream right from the beginning that मुझे इनके साथ एक अल्बम करना ही है. So he came to Mr. Sanjeev Kohli, who was in HMB and recording him, and said, "देखो, you are Madan Mohan's son. You have known Lata Ji from when you were a baby. You have sat on her lap." 
नाउ यू गो एंड टेल हर आई वॉन्ट टू डू अल्बम विथ यू विथ हर एंड ही से ठीक है आई लो ब्लाइज यू मेरे लिए भी अच्छा है अगर हो गया तो टू बिग स्टार्स टू सुपर स्टार्स टूगेदर सो ही मैं गोस्ट टू लता एंड लता सिज बाप रे बाप आई डोंट हैव टाइम टू ब्रीद वेर एम आई गोइंग टू डू अनोन फिल्म सॉन्ग विथ सम विथ अ गुड सिंगर येस बट ही स्टिल अनोन फगेट इट सो ही कम्स एंड टेल्स जगजीत ये नहीं होने वाला जगजीत से एक बार और एक बार मिला तो दो लेट मी सी इफ आई कैन परसुएड हर सो दे मीट सो संजीव जी टॉक्स अबाउट इट जी सेज यहाँ पे जगजीत बैठे हैं यहाँ पे लता जी बैठी हैं और मैं बीच में बैठा हूँ और कंप्लीट साइलेंस सो ही सेज मैं सोच रहा था वॉट डू आई डू आई मीन दिस इज नॉट गोइंग टू एंड देर गोइंग सिट देर इन साइलेंस एंड देर बोथ गो अवे सो ही सेज आई क्रैक्ट जोक वेन ही क्रैक्ट जोक लता जी क्रैक्ट जोक When Lata ji cracked a joke, Jagjit cracked a joke, and soon for half an hour they were cracking jokes, and then finally Jagjit got the courage to say, Lata ji, here are a few songs. Let me sing one or two, and you see if you like it. You like it, nee? So I'll get out of here. And she liked the songs, and so Sajda started happening. It was not easy. Lata was busy. Sanjeev Kohli got transferred, so there was no person to. crack to be pen make sure the recordings happened on time it took 2 years and some of the songs of lata were dropped so that jagjit could do solos to make sure the record got done otherwise it may never get done but till his dying day those songs were not sung by anybody else he kept them they were lata's songs so that was his dedication and that was his understanding of what he wanted to do with lata ji and sajda was completed anyway sajda was done took 2 years to to be completed to be recorded fully and it took another 2 years for it to be released because in between those 2 years jagjit's entire life turned on its head when he lost his son in an accident i mean anybody who has been around in bombay at that time would remember the tragic accident where you know due to new due to a um, negligent act of omission uh, the car hit into a, one of those light changing ghodas and the boy died when vivek died he was the apple of his father's eye and his mother's eye of course but it was he was jagjit's life and jagjit couldn't handle it neither could chitra chitra never recovered she just stopped singing she became a recluse and it took a lot of trouble for me to find her and to get her to talk for the book i mean i think it was the first time she had actually she actually opened up and it was very painful for her it was painful for me to watch her uh, her pain you know but she did speak about all this and jagjit also completely closed in it was as if his world had shattered he couldn't believe it had happened to him boy was 19 years old talented he was his best critic he was possibly going to be another jagjit we don't know but the life ended and chitra says that jagjit just stopped talking stop stopped everything for 6 months they did all sorts of strange things which only desperate parents trying to come to terms with this tragedy will do they went for seances they went they went all the way to america to meet somebody who said i can get his image out of my pro- protoplasm you can look at him they did all sorts of things it is very very painful to read that that section of their life and chitra continued to hold seances one day Ch- jagjit said ab bahut ho gaya let's move on and that day she says he went to the music room and he took uh, the living room where the music was kept took up his tanpura and he just strummed it he sat there and he strummed it and he strummed it nothing he didn't open his eyes his voice was not heard it was as if he was getting the music to draw the pain out of him and take it away and yes he started singing he started giving performances but he was a changed man what happened to him he didn't lose hope he didn't become a cynic which he didn't become bitter as a lot of people do he changed he said give so everything he had he gave there are stories of his generosity which are everywhere i mean i encountered 
zillions of them. If I continued, I could make a whole book on what he did for others. And I must share one very beautiful story about this man who came to him and said, Aap, mere liye please hamare yahan aake gaiye. He said, kyu? He said, nahi, meri ladki ki shadi hone wali hai, aur mujhe do lakh chahiye uske liye. He said, toh? He said, well, if you come, I know I will put up this whole uh, event and uh, I will probably be able to save two, three lakhs out of it. So, ladki ki shadi aaram se ho jayegi. So, Jagjit looked at him and said, hmm, that chance. So, tum uh, wapas jao, come next week. Or they came. So, the man went to bay, came back next week. And Jagjit said, uh, Dekho bhaiya, ye baat hogi nahi. Because suppose you don't get your money and suppose you end up in a loss, then instead of two lakhs, you'll be searching for four lakhs or three lakhs or whatever, even if I sing free. So forget it, find another way to get those two lakhs. And so that, but here is a box of sweets for your daughter. Because after all, she's engaged. I want to celebrate. The boy, man was very disheartened. He went away. But when he went home and opened the box of sweets, there was two lakhs in it. So that was the kind of, you know, again, as I said, Benami sponsorship that he did. And there are stories, and his entire music changed. He started singing devotional, spiritual music in, for all religions, for all labels. And he continued, Chitra never sang with him. And there was, there was that feeling of being adrift without her. But yes, he made his life. So that is the sad story of what happened to Jagjit and Chitra afterwards. I'm going to go now to when he, when towards the end of his life, when he was a man really beaten by life, you know, for a man of such talent, such such a good heart, such a good human being to be hit by life is very sad because first he lost his son, then Chitra's daughter also went. She committed suicide over a broken heart, over a bad, bad relationship. And he continued to sing. And his manager uh, says that he decided on his 70th birthday that he would sing in 70 different places. He would have 70 concerts. And he was going, he says, one day here, one day there, one day there, one day there. What had happened in the process of his concerts is that the man had become a performer from a singer. You saw him in his first cassette where he doesn't look up. You know, there is this internalization of his music. But now he became a performer, he would tell jokes. And I'm going to share a joke with you just to lighten that mood that we all seem to have got into. Uh, whenever he would go, suppose he was here, then because he's in Bombay, he would choose somebody in the audience who's probably a Bombay wala. So he will say, Mr. Deshpande. Mr. Deshpande ke pa yaha, oh, wo ek dukandar the. Dukandar hai. He has a lovely liquor shop. So, one night, he had a phone here. And he took the call. He was watching TV, but he took the call. And somebody said, Desh Pandey Ji, when is your shop open? So, he said, at 11 o'clock. Okay. He kept down the phone. An hour later, again, the phone rang. He said, Desh Pandey Ji, when is your shop open? Same voice, huh? He said, at 11 o'clock. After two hours, he said, if you have a shop open, then I will open it at 10 o'clock. Yes, I will open it inside. Same voice. Now, what is the meaning of this? So, this is the kind of stories he would regale his audience with. And he would build, he would know their pulse, he would know what they wanted, if they wanted classical. The performer in him evolved from the shy singer, uh, and, and, and the arranger and musician to somebody who could hold the audience in any part of the world as if they were his and his alone. And that's why we are all here.